Well, good morning, Element Church. It is so great to be in this space with you. And obviously, I am not in our old studio because our old studio is under construction. But I'm still so excited to lean into God's Word with each and every one of you this morning as we continue our series, Secret Place. And we're in week three. In week one, we talked about how we should make it our ambition to lead a quiet life. In week two, we talked about this idea that prayer is tension and how that's actually a good thing, that it's a, a tension to manage, not a problem to solve, and that really a, Praying intention really is uh, what we're supposed to be doing as Christians, and it's helping us become the people that God has called us to be. And today, what I want to talk to you about is this idea of mountain moments and missional moments. And today, what we're going to talk about is this idea that in the Christian life, every single one of us need these moments where we are getting poured into, where we're getting filled up, and then these moments where we're actually pouring out. And I actually brought a little friend for uh, for us today. This is a little like pouring pot here. And you can see this and, you know, if you filled this up and you poured it out, it's interesting, right? Because if it's not getting filled up, it's not going to pour for very long. And yet if it's not pouring at all and it's just full of water, it's kind of uh, disregarded its purpose. And in the Christian life, what we really need to understand is that there are mountain moments where we're being filled up and then there are missional moments where we're being poured out. And that the Christian life requires us to engage both. And I think because of our season in life, because of our personality types, probably because of a lot of things, maybe our past uh, experiences with church, maybe our lack of experience with church, um, we all may struggle with one of those two things. And so as we spend time together today, I want you to be asking the question as we move through, man, where are the places where I can grow either in being filled up or where are the places that I can grow in actually pouring out. And, you know, we're in a very missional season right now at Element Church. We're in the middle of 21 days of prayer where we have people gathering 7 to 8 a.m. Monday through Friday in the mornings together on Zoom to seek God for our lives and the welfare, not only of, of, of our lives in our city and our family, but of our city and of the church in general, of Element Church, of the campus at Michigan State, uh, of our country, of our world. And we're pursuing God and we're seeking him as we rally together in the mornings. We're also just about to launch into Missions Trip to MSU, which is our number one outreach for the entire year. It's when the Michigan State students come back to campus, and for the first time in their lives, there's uh, 10, 12,000, 18, or 19-year-olds who are on their own making decisions, and they're actually coming from all over the world, and they're in our backyard here for four years, six years, eight years, and they're actually beginning to make decisions this week that will establish the course of the rest of their lives. And there are actually people vying for their attention. And we want to be present to be able to say, hey, you're here to grow in your mind. You're here to grow in your career. But we want you to understand that this is a time, the most instrumental time in your life, to grow in your faith. And so Element Church is present for that. And we're doing that this, this week as we start into this week. As students are, are, are descending into East Lansing from literally all over the world. Uh, also, I want to let you know we're doing a studio rework right now, which as you guys know, because you're viewing this this way right now, but uh, but we're reworking our studio. Why are we doing that? Uh, we're, we're reworking our studio to create more space for the next generation. Our youth group, uh, we have some new youth leaders in tow, and our youth group is doing great things. They had their first informational meeting this last weekend. 20 students were there. We're so excited for that as a base. We're excited for middle and high school students to be gathering together this fall weekly. We're so excited about that, and we're creating space for them to do that. And also the next generation of college students, for them to be able to have a space, a hub to meet. We have our first college ministry intern this fall, which we're so excited about. Kinsley is taking his second lap as our campus ministry staff. And so we're so excited for Mission Trip to MSU as we reach out to make an impact for the gospel at Michigan State this fall. It's a very missional season. Also want to let you guys know that we're actually doing a series this fall called On the Table. And the idea is that all conversations are on the table. And we're going to spend two months this fall looking at some of the hot cultural topics that are happening um, and what the Bible has to say about that what the timeless Bible, the timeless truth has to say about how we live our lives in time and space. And so we're going to look at things like human sexuality and gender. We're going to look at race and justice. We're going to look at women in ministry. We're going to just take a, a look at a whole lot of kind of hot button cultural topics and say, why would you do that? Well, we're doing that because we believe that God has something to say to us as we live our lives in this year, in this time, in this space, in this city, that God is relevant. That God isn't just this idea out there somewhere, but that God is actually a God who comes and moves into our life. That Jesus came, in the book of John it says, Jesus came and manifest in the flesh. 
and revealed himself to us. The message paraphrase says that Jesus uh, moved into the neighborhood. And we believe that that's what God's truth does. And so this fall, we're going to be doing that. So say, Pastor Scott, why take the first few minutes of our time together to lay out all of that? Here's why. Because you're a part of that. And because as Christians, we need to be filled up. Yes, and we talk about that often. We need to to be in prayer. We need to be in worship. We need to be asking God to reveal uh, the depths of our heart and our soul and our traumas and our pain and all of those things. And we need to be missional. And we're in a missional season here at Element Church, and you are a part of that. And to the degree that you're already a part of that, I want to ask you to pray about being an even greater part of that. Because as Christians, we need to be filled up, but we also need to be poured out. And if we're not being filled up, we're not going to pour out for very long. But if we're not being poured out, we're not going to feel the need to be filled up. And those are both true things. So how uh, how many know that when you pour out, you need to be filled up? And again, those are both true mountain moments and missional moments. And I want to say this too, that can be macro in scope, like we're in a missional season at Element Church, but it's also micro in scope. Every day we live our lives in a place where we need to be filled up and poured out. And if we turn our attention to scripture here in week three of secret of the Secret Place series, if you have your Bibles, you can open them to Matthew 17. And this actually was a scripture that was brought up during 21 days of prayer, actually on Friday. And I just thought it fit into this so well. And so I wanted to share it with you. And I've kind of you entitled the message after this. But in Matthew 17, what's happening is Jesus has taken uh, Peter, James, and John up to a mountain with him. And as they go up to the mountain, it says at the top of the mountain that Jesus is transfigured before them, that he literally reveals himself as God, the son of God at the top of this mountain with those three disciples. And actually, as that's happening, uh, Moses and Elijah show up. So let me read it to you here, Matthew 17. It says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. What's he saying? Peter's like, look, this is so cool. This is so awesome. We're literally sensing God. We're seeing God. Jesus, we're experiencing you. And then Peter's like, let's stay here. Let's just stay up here. Let's build some shelters. Let's just make this our reality. Let's make this the place where we stay. And Jesus, and you can read the story on your own, but for a couple of verses, um, it, it, the, the voice of God thunders down and, and basically I'm paraphrasing and we're pulling this one thread out of this story. There's a lot happening in this story, but this one thread is basically like, we cannot stay here on the mountain. Peter, we're not building shelters and just shacking up up here. All, although this, this mountaintop moment, this filling in moment, this moment with God is so good. We keep, we're not going to just stay here. And, you know, for so many of us, we have these moments, these worship moments, prayer in the morning. We have these beautiful moments with God, these moments where we sense his depth and his richness and we love it and we love being in his presence. And that's amazing. And we so desperately need those moments. And we don't just stay in those moments. Because we actually have mountain fill up moments, but we also have missional pour out moments. And as we see here, as you continue the scripture, Matthew 17, 8, it says, when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain. So here they go. They're heading out of the mountaintop fill up moment. And here they go. It says, they came to the crowd and a man approached Jesus and knelt down before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He said, he has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. What's going on? Well, Jesus and three of the disciples are up on this mountaintop moment and getting filled up. They go down to do this missional moment. And there's something in the mission that can't be done if you've not had a pour in moment first, right? That we need both in the Christian life, that we can't stay on the mountain. We have to go pour out. And yet as we go pour out, there's moments where we pour out to do mission and we can only do that mission when we've been filled up. 
that we need the power of God, prayer and fasting. One of the other synoptic gospels, basically another gospel of this same story says, this kind of, of demonic oppression only comes out through prayer and fasting. In other words, the Christian life, we need to be filled up and we need to be poured out. We need both. We can't just do one. We need both of these moments in our lives. And if you aren't pouring out, you're not going to feel the need to be filled up. And that's going to stunt your Christian walk. And if you're pouring out and not being filled up, you're not going to pour for very long, which obviously stunts your Christian walk. And I can show you this through the scripture over and over and over again. I'll show you a couple other spots here. Matthew 28. This is one of the last things Jesus says before he transcends back into heaven. He's, he's gone to the cross. He's died. He's gone in the grave. He's resurrected from the grave. He's walked with his disciples. And now having walked with his, uh, re in a resurrected form with his disciples, he's telling them, hey, I'm going to go to heaven and here's what I need from you. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the last words of Jesus in a, in a, in a resurrected form here in the earth. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey, to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus says, listen, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go and pour out. All authority has been given to me. I've raised from the dead. I'm giving you the assignment now. I'm giving you the mission now. I need you to go out and I need you to take everything I've taught you and I need you to go and disciple the nations. I need you to go pour out to the nations. You are now the mission. And he says, go, and I'm going to be with you, but I need you to go. And then in Acts 1.8, it says, Jesus says this, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus says, I'm sending you out. And Jesus says, by the way, I'm going to be filling you up. And I love in Luke 24, it puts these two together. And this is the same uh, story that actually Matthew 28 is capturing where Jesus is resurrected and he says to the disciples, I need you to go. This is actually the story in the book of Luke, the same story. It says, Jesus says, in repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. And then watch this, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So let me put this all together. Jesus goes to the cross, dies, resurrects, and then says to his disciples, you're now the mission. I'm gonna send you out. You're gonna be the witnesses. You're gonna go to all of these places and you're gonna carry what I've taught you and you're gonna share with other people. But before you go, I need you to go and wait to be filled. I'm gonna pour you out, but before I pour you out, it won't work unless you go and you are filled. And Acts 1.8 says that they were filled. And if you read in the beginning of the book of Acts, which is the birth of the early church, we know that they waited in the upper room and the Holy Spirit descended on them and filled them up with, with flames of fire, with tongues, filling them with power. And the Holy Spirit of God indwelled them and actually made them and called them to go forward. We need both in our lives. We need to pour out and we need to be filled up. We need mountaintop moments and we need missional moments. And I wanna ask you a question based on your personality, your history, uh, your season of life, which one today are you short on? Because you're probably short on one side or the other. Jesus says, I'm sending you to pour, but I am pouring into you so that you can be filled. Psalm 23, one through five, one of my favorite passages in the entire Bible. It says this, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. That sounds like a filling up, like a pouring in scripture to me. And I think it is. Verse four, uh, verse three, he restores my soul. And then watch this. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. He's sending me out. He's guiding me along these paths. And then the passage that so many of us are familiar with, verse four, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So I hope what you're seeing here is Jesus is leading them as a shepherd by still waters, making them to lie down and rest in green pastures. He's restoring our soul. He's filling us up. He's pouring into us. And then it says this, now he's guiding us along the paths for his name's sake. He's sending us out on a mission. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're not afraid because he's with us. He's filled us up. And then we're being poured out. And then watch, and then it loops back. Verse five, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. What does that mean? 
Well, that means that as we're going out and doing the mission, he's actually feeding us as we go. It's the filling up and the pouring out, filling up and pouring out. You prepare a table for me before, uh, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And the idea is that as Christians, we need both. We need to be filled up and we need to be poured out. It's like my little friend, the jar here, right? Filled up and poured out. And if you're not filled up, you're not going to pour out for very long. And if you're not pouring out, you're not ever going to feel the need to be filled up. And both will stop the momentum of your Christian faith and your Christian walk. And for some of us, you know, we feel comfortable with the being poured in thing. We're like, ah, oh, I love prayer. I love to worship, but I just feel uncomfortable pouring out. I feel uncomfortable with the mission. And some of us, we feel comfortable running up, if I could be honest, kind of running up ahead of God and getting things done in our own strength. And we need to slow down and we need to wait to be filled. And I don't know which one of those two sides you fall on uh, this morning, but I would just encourage us to look at that either way. You know, it is interesting um, because a lot of us, I'll just take one side of that for a moment. A lot of us are afraid to mess up. And I, I feel like uh, I run into that more where people are like, me, I'm not really, you know, I'm not a minister. I, I, I don't really know that God can use me or that God wants to use me. You know, it's fascinating because in this passage where they go up to the mountain and Jesus is transfigured and they come down, and they're doing this ministry. Right in that uh, window of time, you can read about it in Luke 9. They're actually going back to Jerusalem and they're going through Samaria and Jesus actually sends them up ahead of him to prepare a place for him in Samaria. And the Samaritans are basically like, we don't want Jesus here. We know that you guys are going to Jerusalem. You're not welcome here. And the disciples are really upset about this. And so they go back to Jesus and they're like, hey, they're not going to welcome you. And then the, the disciples say this, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? And I love that because these disciples that were with Jesus on this mountaintop and getting filled up and having this encounter with God, they come down and as they enter into mission, kind of wet behind the ears, they're just getting started. They make this huge blunder. They're like, they're like, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and, you know, incinerate these people that are not with you? Because we understand now, Jesus, we're going on mission with you. And Jesus says in uh, Luke 9, 55 through 56, it says, but he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you're of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went along to another village. And here's what I need you to know, is that God will use you even when you make mistakes. Even the disciples, they always are making mistakes. They're always misstepping, and yet God uses them. And I want to remind us that the greatest ability in the kingdom of God is actually availability. Do you know that Jesus goes and he calls his disciples and he says, come, follow me. And you know, there's other people in the scripture, the rich young ruler who is very self-sufficient and very able, by the way, for all of us who want to run up ahead of God and do things in our own strength and not wait on him. This is one is for us. But you know, it, the rich young ruler, he's wealthy, he's young, he's, he's a, he has a lot of ability and he's a ruler. He's very influential and he's very powerful. And Jesus says to him, go sell all that you have and come follow me. Come be available to me. And it says that the rich young ruler went away sad for he had many possessions. He wasn't available. And the greatest ability in the kingdom of God is availability. And so I want to be a person who will wait on God to be filled up in worship and in prayer. But I also want to be a person who can be poured out in following Jesus. And I want those two things to go together in my life. And so as we're talking about that, again, many of us, we, we won't slow down. But some of us, we won't speed up. We won't pour out. We're afraid to pour out. And I'm here to remind us today of this thing. And, and we talk about this all the time at Element Church, that everyone is a minister, that every job matters, and that everyone is a 10 somewhere. Everybody is a 10 somewhere. You are on a scale from one to 10. You're a 10 somewhere that I'm not. And I'm a 10 somewhere that you're not. And so every job matters. Uh, everyone is a minister and everyone is a 10 somewhere. Ephesians 4, 12 through 16 says this, that the church is actually put together to equip people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their, defe de de and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking truth and love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. And in verse 16, check this out. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. And then I have this bolded as each part does its work. 
as each part does its work. That's what's going to make us mature. That's what's going to grow us up. That's what's going to put us together and make sure we're mature as a, as a body of Christ so that we're not thrown to and fro. And we're not infant-like. We're actually mature and established and stable. Is that all of us come together and we look to Christ and we understand he's our head. We, we let him fill us up. And yet... The body is actually functioning when every piece, every ligament, every part does its work on mission together, each part doing its work. And I want to remind you that you're on mission and that we're in a missional season here at Element Church, that we're in the middle of 21 days of prayer, that we're embarking on a mission trip to MSU, that our ministry with the next generation is growing and moving forward. And so I want to ask you today, as we reflect on this idea that we need to be filled up and we need to be poured out, and I've been asking you to make a distinction and and be honest with yourself about where you can grow in those things. I want to remind you of the areas that I tell all of us about actually in our next steps process. And if you've taken next steps recently, you know about this. And if you haven't, if you've been around Element any amount of time, you know that these things are here for us, but I want to remind us of them. And I want to remind you today what I tell anybody who's who says, hey, Element Church is my people and I'm in and I want to be a part of this. What do I need to do? How do I join the mission here at Element Church? I want to remind you four areas today to remind us of. Number one is the community covenant. And really what we tell people as they come through next steps is, hey, there's this commitment that we make to each other in community that we're going to commit to one another that we're going to show up on Sundays together and we're going to gather around the word of God and we're going to worship him together and we're going to be there for each other. And yes, we're going to receive from that time, but really we're going to serve each other in that time too. We need you present on Sunday morning. So if you're watching this and you're here in the East Lansing area, man, we need you uh, at Element Church. And I'm so glad that we have the technology to do this. And I'm so glad you're watching this today and well done. And I know that, you know, we all have lives and I I know there's weeks when we can't be present, but man, unless there's some really key you. Let's commit to each other in community and let's be there together. So Sunday mornings and, and committing to that together, our gatherings, and then, and then what we call hubs and groups, just being in groups together and being in hubs together where, where we're a part of community and where we're receiving communication with each other and where we're committing to be with each other in smaller groups. And, you know, that can look like a group that you're a part of this fall. That can also just look like being in a in an informal group together, three or four people that meet together, but being in community and being in relationship with one another. The third thing is it looks like a financial partnership. And, you know, I, I do a fair amount of teaching on that. And you can go back on our media sites and, and you can look at all this on, on our social media sites and you can watch teaching in these areas. But I want to, in a new season, as we're in a missional season, I want to ask you to pray and ask God how you should be partnering financially here at Element Church. And that looks different for different people, but I want to ask you to pray and to ask God, man, how can I give into this season? It's such a huge deal for us as a church. And, you know, more dollars, more money equals more ministry. And more ministry equals more people growing and connecting into community and with the love of God. And that's really what we get to do together. And, you know, just like the scripture we read in Ephesians, it says, from Jesus, the whole body joined and held together. And we are. But Jesus is is holding us together and we focus on him. But then this part, by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And part of that work is is bringing our finances, bringing finances that God has given us and entrusted to us and actually taking something physical, like a physical dollar, and actually sowing it into God's kingdom so that it becomes something eternal, that it becomes the gospel message going forward to the next generation to make a difference and to change the lives of people forever. And I want to ask you to pray about sowing in financially to Element Church and the work that's happening here. And so that's the third part that we talk about at, at next in the next steps process. And then the fourth part is joining Team Element, is serving, is being a part of of being a part of the team every Sunday. And, you know, um, as I said, the greatest, avail- uh, the greatest ability in the kingdom is availability. And so for many of us, it's just like, man, how can you serve functionally at Element Church? And again, I know that looks different for every person. I know you might be a mom and you're like, hey, you know what? I, I drop my kids off in the morning at preschool or kindergarten or grade school, and then I got to be ready to pick them up, you know, a couple hours later in the day. And so there's really not a lot I can do. It's like, hey, you might be able to help us administratively from your house for an hour a day, uh, two, uh, you know, two, two hours to three hours a week, uh, whatever it might be, but you can make a difference. And we, and we could, that part makes a difference. 
Uh, you might say, man, I, you know, I can't serve midweek, but I can help on Sunday morning. I can help set up or tear down, or I could actually help invest the gospel into kids in the back during a service once a month or whatever it might be. But um, we tell people as they come through next steps, man, join the team, pour out here. And, and I want to remind us that there are ways we corporately pour out. There's ways we corporately contribute at Element Church. And then there's ways that we individually pour out and contribute in our sphere of influence, at our job, in our homes, in our workplaces. And all of those things are true. And so I want to continue to ask you today, as we talk about that a, a robust Christian life is a life that's full of being poured in, that, that God's pouring into us, and then also that we're pouring out. I wanna ask you, where are you short in one of those two? And then how can you make a difference? And I just gave you four ways here at Element Church, being present on Sundays. Man, can you be present on Sundays? Can you be a part of the relational community network through hubs and groups and just being present with people relationally? Can you give financially and be a part of, of supporting, being a supporting ligament here at Element Church? And then can you serve? Can you make a difference through serving with your time and your talents? And all of those things are true because the greatest ability in the kingdom is availability. And you know, as we start to move to a close this morning, I want to remind you, you know, we talk about this at Element Church and, uh, you know, we, we uh, at Element Church, this is our, our logo here. Many people ask us, you know, what does that mean? Where did that come from? And, you know, there's, there's four bars, uh, there's four bars here and, um, and they actually stand for the four elements, what we call the four elements. And, you know, we, uh, when we were praying about, you know, uh, launching this church out, we had a bunch of conversations about the power of, of, of launching a, an inter, uh, a, a non-denominational, um, multi-generational, multi-ethnic church in East Lansing, walking distance to campus. And, you know, we were talking about how the world sends their best and brightest people to us for four to six years, and they're learning in our backyard. And, uh, and then they're going back home and they're leading in schools and workplaces and whatever. And, and we said, you know, we, we, we spend Christian dollars to send missionaries out all over the world. And that's great. And we want to keep doing that. And we partner with many of those ministries, but the world is spending their dollars to send their best and brightest to us. And then they're learning here and then they're going out and they're leading. And so we said, what would it look like to have a church? that would be right here, that we would actually take a local church into campus, into East Lansing, into this dual uh, community, which is a, a, a transient community, but a community of, yes, students, but also adults and families. And what would it look like for us to bring a, a church right there and then to invest the gospel there? And then it would actually, those people would take it out all over the world. And that's why we talk about change the backyard, change the world. And we were just captured and enraptured with that vision and that idea. And as we were talking about that, we started talking about, man, what would it look like to put things in kind of like a, a spiritual backpack for people that are coming through and moving through this city? Uh, what elements would we want people to take away? And we just kept saying that word, what elements would they take away? And we came up with four things. They would be loved by God. They would be people that just know that God loves them and that God is in, wants to be in relationship with them and that they would be a people that are loved by God. And here, as I lay out these four elements that represent the four bars on our logo that really was sitting at the core of, our, of this church, I, I, I want to remind you in context what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is we're talking about this move from being filled up to pouring out. And what I want you to see is that even at the base of, of this church, these four things, they capture this 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 transition from being filled up to pouring out. Isn't this cool? That we're loved by God. That the love of God is the establishing concept in our lives. That, that it's not just our love for God. It's actually first and foremost God's love for us. And that as God loves us, we're filled up. We're established. Our identity is set. God is pouring into us. Do you guys see that? I hope you see that. I think you see that. And then the second element is that we're liberated by truth that the word of God actually opens us up and that it's not limiting to us, but that, it's, it, that our life is most fulfilled and flourishes not when we actually chart our own course, but when we actually align our lives to the will of God for us, that, that the truth of God, the Bible is actually liberating, not limiting. And that true liberty is not doing whatever I want, but it's actually operating within my design. And the idea is that God and God's word actually shows me what that looks like. And that the truth of God, John 8 says, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And this idea that we're liberated by truth, 
that truth moves in and God's word moves in sharper than any two-edged sword and it divides down to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, uh, that I read the Bible, but the Bible reads me. And as God and his spirit and the word of God is reading me, it's actually bringing awareness to my, to my world. It's making me aware of my inner world, of my pain and my trauma, of my, my sin. And it's actually bringing me into a place of freedom. And I hope that you can see loved by God and liberated by truth is actually this idea that God's pouring into us, that God's making us, that God's molding us. And then we move to the third element, the third bar, which is this, which is listening in surrender. And you can start to see the transition here from actually being poured into and then beginning to pour out is that the, the, we said, man, we're, we're a supernatural people. We're a people that walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, that God's Spirit fills us up and, and indwells us. And then we begin to turn and pour out. We say the causative factor of a supernatural life is actually listening for God's Spirit in a posture of surrender. And we say, man, what a powerful way to live a life in the, in, in, that we're listening in surrender. That in the Old Testament, Samuel the prophet begins to learn to hear the, the voice of God. And he says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And as he learns that way to listen to God, that actually he becomes the prophet that anoints Saul, the first king of Israel, and then David as the next king of Israel. And that the power of our life is actually when the Holy Spirit comes and flows through us. As Henry Blackaby says, find where God's working and join him there. And by listening and surrender, that's what we're able to do. And I hope you can see is that, yes, we're being filled up and we're listening for the voice of God, but then actually we're doing that so we can live a spirit-empowered life, Acts 1.8 that they went and waited for the empowerment from on high. And that's listening and surrender. And that leads me to the fourth element, the fourth bar, the fourth part of our logo here, uh, the fourth core concept of this church. The fourth thing that we want to put in someone's spiritual backpack as they move through this city, the fourth element, which is this, living on mission. And just that when the first three elements are active in our life, when we're being filled up, man, please let me go and pour me out. And God, would you show us how to live our lives in mission, in purpose. God, God, use me. God, make me your hands and your feet. God, I'm available to you. And so today, as we talk about this idea that Christians need mountain moments where we're being filled up, yes, we want to stay in those moments and they're beautiful moments. And yet we have mission moments to go do and that we need both to live a robust Christian life, that we're loved by God and liberated by scripture and listening and surrender and then living on mission, that there's this move in our lives. Man, as we look at the power of that today, I want to ask you the question, where do you need to grow? What is, and I wrote these down for us, what is the one thing that would most increase mountain moments in your life? Maybe you're somebody that says, man, that's where I need to grow. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been pouring out in my, you know, my, my thing is to run up ahead and, and I need to just slow down and I need to learn to rest and I need to learn to let God pour into me. What's the one thing right now in this season that you could do for more mountain moments, more fill up moments? Maybe you're somebody that says, who, me? I, I, I'm not a minister. God doesn't want to use me like that. That's for you, Pastor Scott. I'm glad that you're on this little video here talking. And that's, you know, I'm here to be filled up. And I'm glad you're talking. I don't do things like this. And I would just say to you, God wants to use your life and pour you out. And God has a plan and a purpose for you. And until you understand that and you begin to pour out, you're never going to live a full, robust Christian life. You're never going to understand the depths of God until you begin to pour out. And as you begin to pour out, you're going to sense the need to be filled up again. And, but as you're poured out, we remind ourselves that every task is important and that everyone is a minister and that everybody's a 10 somewhere. And you're a 10 somewhere. And maybe for you today, I want to ask you this question. And again, I wrote it down. What is the one thing that would most increase mission moments for you in your life? What's something you could do right now in this season to increase the ability to pour out? Because that may be what you need. Mountain moments to fill up and mission moments to pour out. We need both in our lives. And if you are not pouring out, you're not going to sense the need to be filled up. And if you're filled up and full and you're not pouring out, uh, that doesn't work very well either. And if you are full, uh, and you begin pouring out and you're not being filled up, you're not going to be pouring out for very long. And you can just run this circle, right? And you can run this over and over again. We need to be loved by God. And we need to be liberated by truth. And we need to be listening and surrender. And we need to be living on mission. And I believe, guys, from the core of this church, that is actually what creates a robust Christian life. And that's my prayer for you today. 
Let me pray over us. Father, we thank you for today. And God, I pray, God, for fresh mountaintop moments and God, fresh missional moments. And I pray, God, that each person within the sound of my voice, God, would be able to slow down today and assess which of those two they need to focus on in this season. God, I pray for those who have run up ahead and God don't know how to rest and don't know how to stop. God, I pray that you would teach them to rest and they would, God, you would teach them in this season, God, you would teach them what mountain moments look like, God, that they would retreat and they would move into the mountaintops to see you transfigured before their face and God, that they would draw from you in worship and in prayer and in Bible reading and God, that they would grow in being loved by you and they would grow in being liberated by the truth and they would learn new things about themselves and new things about you and they would grow in listening, God, in a posture of surrender. God, I pray that you would reveal to them even now, God, the one thing that they could do in this season to be filled up in a fresh way. And God, for those of us that just don't believe that we could be used, God, for those of us that don't know how to be poured out, we're afraid, we're scared, we're afraid we're gonna mess up. God, I pray that in this season, God, you would begin to open up opportunities for those of us that are in that camp to step into. God, would you create moments where we could step out and step in and trust you, God, and in the place of, uh, of committing to a local church, God. God, uh, in a place of committing to relationships and groups and in hubs, God, and in a place of committing to to give, God, financially, to partner financially, that each supporting ligament would do its part. And God, that you'd begin to speak to each individual, God, on how they can give, God, financially in support. And, and God, and then in how to serve. And that each one could serve in a way, God, yes, in a corporate sense, I believe here at Element Church, I pray that you would begin to speak that over each one, God, that availability is the greatest ability. And God, that you would begin to speak about where their part is because every task is important and everyone's a minister and everyone's attend somewhere and begin to speak that for the corporate call, the corporate mission. But then God, I also pray you'd begin to speak that on the personal side. In our sphere of influence, God, that you'd begin to speak to them how they can make a difference in their workplace, in their school, in their family. God, what's the thing that they can do to be poured out and to be your hands and feet, God, in this season in their personal space? And so I pray that over each one, God, that they would need to move into a deeper sense of mission, God, that they would sense where you're working, they would ask where you're working, they would listen for where you're working, and then they would join you there. So God, I thank you for that. God, I pray for anybody who's never started a relationship with you today. And if that's you, would you just pray this with me right now? Just say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I surrender this life to you and I ask you to come in and to have me. I confess to you that I'm a sinner and I believe that you're the son of God and that you gave your life for me. And I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. God, thank you for coming in and creating something new in me, giving me a new heart and a new life. God, thank you for uh, allowing me to be born again and to live with you into all of eternity. We thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, whatever prayer you just prayed, if you prayed for uh, salvation for the first time or as a recommitment, you can text the keyword element to 97,000. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And then, you know, if you were praying about, man, where is the place I need to actually take a step of faith, a step of action to, to, to slow down, to rest, to be filled up? Or where is the place where I need to take a step of faith, a step of action to actually step out and to actually be poured out? Whatever that is for you, I pray you would continue to ask the Holy Spirit as we move into a time of worship. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you back here next week at Element Church.